Okay, so this is going to be a fun <laughs> uh, topic. Um, sometimes um, it could be fun. But what is very important about understanding the probability of at least one or how to calculate the probability of what we call at least one, um, you, you really need to have a good understanding of complements. So, you know, we're, we're doing this by using the concept of complements. And that's very important that you understand what that is. And if you don't, you need to go back into my other video to, to um, understand what a complementary event is. Um, now, well, let's talk about at least one. What does at least one mean? At least one means one or more, right? I'm actually write all of this out because at least one means one or more. So let's say that I have um, 10 cookies. <laughs> so um, I want, okay, so I have different cases from these 10 cookies. I can either eat zero cookies I can eat exactly one of the cookies, I can eat exactly two of the cookies, or exactly three, or exactly four, or exactly five, or I could eat six, or seven, or eight, or nine, or ten cookies, right? This is the number that I eat. These are all the different scenarios, right? Um, all the different outcomes. I can eat zero cookies out of the ten cookies, I can eat one of them, or two. Now, let's say the cookies have different flavors. There's ten different flavored cookies. So that means, let's say, for example, if I eat one of the cookies, I don't know which one it is. If I eat two of the cookies, you know, I have a lot of different combinations of how I can eat those two cookies. I have a lot of different combinations as to how I can eat three cookies out of the ten. It could be a chocolate, um, a chocolate cookie, a peanut butter cookie, and a sugar cookie, or a sugar cookie and a sticker doodle cookie, and you know, um, a white chocolate cookie, or, you know what I mean? I have a lot of different ways that I can go ahead and eat exactly three of the 10 cookies. So, you know, but these are the total outcomes, right? Now, what does it mean? What does it mean? Let's do it in red. No, let's do it in yellow. What does it mean when I say that I want to eat, let's just eat, at least one cookie? <laughs> What does it mean when I say I want to eat at least one cookie? That means I want to eat one or more cookies, right? I want to eat one or more cookies. <laughs> so that's, you know, all this, all the possible cases, one or more cookies. So I can eat one cookie or two cookies or three cookies or four cookies or exactly five cookies or exactly six cookies or exactly seven cookies, blah, 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 right? I mean, that's a lot. What if I say, what if I want the probability that I eat at least one cookie? I mean, ugh. that means that I want the probability of one cookie or the probability of two cookies or the probability of three cookies or all the way to 10, right? When I do ors, right? The or case implies addition. So I'm doing probability of one plus the probability of two plus the probability of three plus the probability all the way to 10. Now that's a big calculation, okay? That's a big calculation, especially since I don't know the order in which I'm eating, let's say, those three cookies. I mean, just to calculate the probability of eating exactly three of the 10 cookies, that's a big deal in itself, let alone finding each of these different scenarios because the order in which I eat those three cookies matters. So that's a pain. What is the complement of that? So in red, I'm going to talk about the complement. What's the complement of eating at least one cookie? Well, look at this. What's not in yellow? Zero. Zero cookies is the complement of one or more, right? One or more is one to ten. Everything but that is the complement. Well, the only thing not included here is zero. So using my complementary rules, to get the probability that I eat at least one cookie, remember the sum of all these probabilities has to be one, right? If you think about sample space, right? And the sum of, pro of, of probabilities and of, in their complements. So what could I do? I could say, well, one minus the probability of zero cookies eaten. 
and I'll get the same exact outcome. So this is a rule. This is a rule. Um, overall formula rule. If I want to calculate calculate the probability of at least one of something, I can always make it easier for self for myself and say this is the same thing as one minus the probability of none of that scenario, right? If I want the probability that I eat at least one cookie, it's the same thing as doing one minus the probability that I eat no cookies. And I'm going to show you examples of, um, you know, these situations in a second. So here's your quote unquote formula. The probability of at least one is equal to one minus the probability of none because at least one, that idea and none, that idea are complementary events. So they add up to one. They're complementary events. Sorry that I kind of go diagonally. Um, so, well, let's see, let's do an example of this. Okay. I have 10 multiple choice questions on a test. So each question has five options. Let's just say. So it's multiple choice. Each question has five options. So that means A, B, C, D, or E. So each multiple, you know, multiple choice question has an A part, a B part, a C part to, to you know, to pick. Um, <clears throat> let's say that I'm randomly guessing on all of them. Randomly guessing on each question. Okay, this is my scenario. Let's just start with before I go into more detail. What is the probability that I get one question correct? Just in general, just one question, just one question. Forget about the, the 10. Let's just say one question. What's the probability that I randomly guess on one question and I get it correct? Well, if there are five total options, only one of the five are correct. So the probability that I randomly get one question correct is one out of five. So therefore the probability that I get one question incorrect is four out of five. Four out of the five questions are incorrect. These are complementary events. Now I'm gonna go deeper. So this is just for one question, right? This is just for one question. Let's leave this here separate by itself for a second. What if I ask you, find the probability that out of the 10 questions, I get at least one question correct. Now, what does that mean? At least one means one or more. So if I wanna calculate this, that means that I'm getting exactly one question correct or exactly two questions correct or exactly three questions correct, or four, five, six, seven, eight, or exactly 10, right? All of this is included in the concept of at least one, right? One or more. Now that is, again, like I said, a large type of calculation, cumbersome as we say. So what makes this an easier calculation? Well, what is the complement, right? What is the only thing not included here? What's the only thing not included in at least one? Zero. So I'm going to say, well, instead of doing all of these probabilities, I'm going to say, well, I'm going to do one minus the probability that I got zero correct. Okay. So now all I have to do is calculate this rather than all these 10 different probabilities. I only have to calculate one probability. It makes my life easier. But now I have to figure out what is the probability that in 10 questions, I randomly guess on all 10 that I get none of them correct. Well, on the first question, these are independent events, right? The, um, the probability of me getting one, co one question correct is not going to affect the probability of me getting a second question correct because I'm randomly guessing on all of them. So what is the probability that the first question is incorrect? Incorrect, right? Four-fifths. And how many questions are on this test? 
10 total questions. So the probability, let me grab my calculator real quick, where is it? So the probability that I randomly get or I ran, you know, on this test, I have 10 multiple choice questions. The probability that I randomly guess on every single one, and um, I go and I get them all wrong, right? I want zero correct, is, let's do this, four fifths to the 10th power. So four divided by five to the 10th power, right, is this part. And I want to subtract that from one. One minus the last answer. So on top of the negative sign, you have A and S, second, and negative is going to pull up my last answer is 89.3 percent okay so this is approximately in percentage form so we'll say 0 0.893 or 89.3 percent chance well let's see if that makes sense now I'm claiming I go to this test and there's 10 uh, 10 multiple choice questions and I'm saying that um, What's the probability that on the 10 questions, I get at least one right? Well, do you imagine that if you go to a test and you um, guess on every question, there's 10 questions, you go and you guess on every question, do you think that you would get at least one right? I think that you would, right? You would expect to get at least one right. That doesn't mean you're going to pass it. You could get one right or two right or three right. That doesn't mean you're going to pass it. But, I mean, at least one correct, I would imagine that's so. That's a high percentage, right? 89.3% chance that you go to this test and you have 10 questions and you guess on every single one and you get at least one right. That makes sense to me. Um, always make sure that your probability makes sense with your situation. Let's do another one from this book here. It has been reported that 20% of iPhones manufactured by this company for a product launch do not meet Apple's quality standards. An engineer needs at least one defective iPhone so she can try to identify the problems. If she randomly selects 15 phones from a very large batch, what is the probability that she will get at least one that is defective? So anytime I hear that, I mean, really, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to underline Okay, anytime you hear at least one, you're going to use this concept that I'm talking about. So here, I'm going to underline that. At least one. Anytime I see this, boom, at least one, I'm using this concept, okay? So the probability, I'm going to go straight to the probability of at least one is equal to the probability, or sorry, is equal to one minus the probability of none. I mean, you could use this formula. So the probability that you get at least one defective iPhone is equal to one minus the probability that you get no or none, but that's not proper English, defective iPhones from this company. Okay? Does that make sense? I mean, you can, like I said, go straight to this. The probability of at least one is always one minus the probability of none. I said that's kind of like a formula if you want to think of it. It's always the situation. Um, so if you're going to use that as a formula, if, you, if you're asked to find the probability of at least one, always write one minus the probability, probability of none. And then, you know, what is your situation? The probability of le at least one defective iPhone is equal to one minus the probability of no defective iPhone. But you have 15 iPhones right so I want the probability that at least one of these 15 iPhones is defective that's what that my, that's my situation here well I have to figure out for one phone before I could figure out 15 so let's look at just one phone okay just one phone what is the probability that that one phone is defective well let's see um, it has been reported that 20% of iPhones manufactured by Foxconn or whatever for a product launch did not meet Apple's quality standards. That means they're defective. So 20% of them are defective. So in general, if one is defective, the probability that it is defective is 20% or 0.2. For one phone, what is the probability that it is not defective? Well, if the probability that it is defective is 0.2, the probability that it is not defective is the complement is 0.8. This is for one phone, just one phone, just one phone. 
Now I need to figure out one phone to figure out, you know, 15. Well, let's look at now the probability of at least one defective phone, right, out of the 15. One minus the probability of none or no defective phone out of the 15. So now I just have to figure this out. Well, what is the probability that one phone is not defective? The probability that one phone is not defective is 0.8. How many phones do I have? 15 of them. Don't forget, this is the multiplication rule here that applies, because I have more than one phone. If it were just one phone, it would just be 0.8. But I have more than one phone here that I'm talking about, at least one defective phone out of 15. Let's calculate that um, straight here. One minus parentheses 0.8 to the 15th power. Now I'm gonna before I get this number, let's assume, let's think about it. Do we expect it to be high? Do we expect this probability to be large or small? I mean, if you look here, we go. This is a large percentage. I mean, 0.96. Let me write that down. This is approximately 0.965. So this is 96.5% chance. This is the situation. I go to, you know, this engineer takes 15 iPhones from this company. And, you know, we're saying that the probability that out of the 15, at least one of them is defective is 96.5%. That's a high probability that at least one of those 15 iPhones is defective. That means that this company sucks. Well, does that make sense? I think so. The probability that one of them is defective is 20%. That's pretty high. You go buy this phone, 20% chance that the phone that you buy is defective. It makes sense that out of 15, at least one of them would be defective, and that probability is high. 96.5% chance. Always make sure that the situation makes sense, um, or at least the probability, the numerical value that you get makes sense for the situation. Does it make sense that this would be so high?